Hello again, and welcome to Vance Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons. And I'm Carla Garrick. And we're back in the studio still. We are. I think that's a given for, you know, I don't think that. It is. Good. I have to say I miss Brandon's voice going three, two, one. It is. One, more, well, so. it is so much different. <laughs> it's just more legit. Um, we tried to do a Facebook Live for this. Yeah, Facebook doesn't like us this morning. So next week we'll try that. Um, so been a crazy busy <laughs> week if you are someone oh. who works on police accountability or it's pretty... if you live anywhere because apparently i mean we talked about this last week on the show about you know how horrific it was that the police killed this man in minneapolis and whatnot um since then there's been protests all over the country uh protests here in new hampshire um i think there was one yesterday in laconia i don't know i can't keep up um that's all going on. Um, then we're in people. I don't really. I mean, I have to say I was I was deeply moved. I for some reason, I'm not getting notifications for these events. So I. I don't know why the the algo is not making sure, you know, the right people see it. And and I want to talk to the people. So if someone's watching this yeah. and they know how how they're mobilizing so many people. But I saw a photo from Saturday in Concord. There was that like a thousand people or something. Blew my mind. It is the most people yeah, I have it was ever big. seen and up I, at Concord. And good for you. Yeah. Good for getting out oh, there I, and, and raising your voice. You know, there's absolutely nothing wrong with protesting. That is something. Oh, except if you're protesting well, the reopen because, well, that the, you know, but I got a lot well, of hate for that. They, <laughs> I mean, apparently all we needed to move the COVID needle to, in our favor was some protesting and some riots because and and obviously George Flynn's funeral because there were families that have you know had restrictions not just in New Hampshire everywhere across the country there have been you know people when they had a loved one die had to have very very skill, scaled back funerals um, but apparently the so that's I not think the case. I think that's a legitimate thing to talk about is um, the sort of dual standards but I think that we should be you know, careful. I think there's a real opportunity here for people who are interested in reforming yes. things and genuinely saying, look, what we currently have is not good enough. And how can we make it better? Yep. Now, you know, someone like me, I, I can't lie and not say I'm slightly frustrated because I have spent, you know, a good 12 years. I mean, if you count my time in South Africa, right. I've been working on this issue, a you long know, time. since I was 16. So, you know, it's been a hot second. Yep. And um, and so, you know, I want to I want to applaud and, and, and really, you know, engage the people who are out there doing it. But also, I kind of want to do a little bit of finger wagging. Say, well, why, where why, why wasn't anybody listening all along? Well, why, well, that, of course. I mean, and I think maybe that's just the nature of you I know. Know, <laughs> doing the right thing. But, you know, I say have jokingly because I have my podcast told you so. And I feel like maybe people who, who look at these issues from a first principle perspective, mm -hmm. By which I mean, we have certain rights as human beings, right? Uh, regardless of what color your skin is or your race is or whatever, these are fundamental rights, which is why someone like me went out to both the reopen rallies and Black Lives yeah. Matter, right? Because you, um, and I didn't actually go to the rally, just I don't want to misstate anything, uh, but I, you know, I support people's right to be out there and, and I'm excited because right. I think maybe we could actually get some reforms out of this. But you know, I was thinking, can you imagine if I took the hate mail, <laughs> hate mail, like like I couldn't even utter the words on the show of what people said to me when I went out and said, we as free human beings have the right to move freely at all times. There is no emergency, in my opinion, that can ever justify one group of people, we'll call them the state, telling other people what they're allowed to do with their lives. Mm -hmm. That is some form of slavery, and I'm just not into it. Uh, but if I superimpose the things that people said to me about supporting the right of free people to move freely and to say we have a fundamental natural human right to go about our lives on photos from Black Lives Matter, people's heads right. would explode. Because, and this is- I, I, I got death threats, yeah. I got death wishes, I got all of that stuff. And I'm like, but then in, in the course of less than a month, it went from these germs and you're an awful human being if you do these things to these germs don't matter well, anymore. Even, <laughs> even worse, it's not even like, it's not just that that's a community attitude because like you said, I do think 
the the community in general, very broad, can shift focus from this outrage to that outrage really quickly, and that one I mean, goes away. It's a away. little terrifying it how is. fast it's happening. Um, right? But I did read, and I don't know, I don't have the name or anything handy, but I did read different articles where. Um, an epidemiologist from John Hopkins, who we're listening to through this crisis, actually said, well, yes, the, the virus is very, you know, it's very important, but the protesting is more important. And I thought, well, th that well, doesn't, I mean, and I, I don't necessarily do. disagree, but I'm thinking, but wait, last week before George, before this man was killed, all focus all the time from the science world. And this is where Dan and I keep talking, you know, science, all these um, DHHS leads and all this stuff, their priority is the morbidity rate, period. Whether you, that's morbidity from the virus or from a seat, not wearing a seat belt or from drunk driving, it doesn't matter how people die. They just want the number to decrease in any way possible. So their, their objective is different than balancing the objective of keeping the community safe while not infringing on rights. The, you know, the government should be doing well, this a little bit more. Well, except that I think, you know, it's fair to say everything has been politicized. And, you know, I, I was thinking about I'm going to sign up for, for my Senate race again tomorrow. Uh, probably this is, you know, obviously the week to do it. But, you know, I was thinking about, like, what could I make of that sort of a catchy slogan? And I was like, you know what? If you think politics has taken over too much of your life, then I'm your gal, right? <laughs> because, you know, I look at when, it, when, I, when you pick up your phone, there's all the push stuff of COVID. Then there's all the report this post. You know, it's like, uh, like you go on Facebook now or, and it's like, you know, like, like we're being ruled by the Stasi, which was the secret police, you know, in, in Poland and in Western uh, West Berlin back in the day. And it's just it's it's shocking to me that like all of this, it's just all the time, 24 seven. And I just want to go back to a normal life yeah. where things are in balance. And the reason why we're so caught up and what the government is up to is because it's too big. It is harming everyone and how they benefit is what they do is they pit the extreme left and the extreme right against each other. And then so they there's, there's all this on. yelling and like, well, and there are these mad people. But the government itself just keeps getting yeah. bigger and yeah. bigger. Our national debt just keeps getting bigger yeah. and bigger. Like we're in deep, deep trouble. And I think that people who are you know, the, the the happy middle maybe even, right? Like all of us who are like, okay, like none of this seems right anymore. Yeah, right, right. Uh, should just say enough. We right. want reform. Yep. We want the police to change. We want our cities to change. And I want my pools open, Mayor well, Craig. That's okay, so let's <laughs> shift to that. So last week, um, Manchester Republican Committee put out um, some information that there is a private pool or a private club in the north end of Man I assume in the north end of Manchester um it's like eleven hundred dollars a year for a membership nice um I assume that's a family membership but it's still that's not like a twelve dollar a year thing um it's not my planet fitness. it has a pool in it <laughs> and um Manchester health director Anna Thomas who was the one testifying that you know oh my god we can't open the public pools um is working with this private uh, club to get their pools open. And, you know, like there's discussion, people go, oh, I, that's discrimination. No, actually, that's not discrimination. There is nothing to say that a private club can't charge whatever they want for their membership. Oh, sure. Yeah. I, you know, that's the way the world works. I can't afford to no, buy. But there is discrimination when, the a, government, when, when a public yes. health official is saying germs don't count for the rich people, but germs do well, count so, for, I believe, use the term, those Well, people. that's what I want to, I want to read the words so that okay. I do not <laughs> misstate. Um, this is a transcription of Anna Thomas's, she's the city health director's, um, speech before they voted on not opening the pools. Um, I think the reality is that it comes back to whether or not we can control the environment and whether or not you can expect children who won't comply with most things on most days, especially in those city pools, would abide by those guidelines. 
I'm whiter than white, and I take high offense when somebody says, especially in those city pools, because I hear that as, so this private pool over here in the more affluent neighborhood, those children might listen to guidelines, but those children, are, and where is the outrage from the left no. who is outraged by everything that everybody possibly writes or says to say, wait a minute, so are you saying that the kids that go to the hunt pool in the inner city, if we can call it an inner city in Manchester, I mean, it's hardly inner city, but you know, in the center city, can't follow guidelines or somehow are more, are not able to manage, but the kids in the North End whose I families mean, can pay $1,100 for a membership. I, I, I think there are two points that we should talk about there. The one is this sort of idea, you know, um, can, can, can we just stop with the control of others? Can we get back to people minding their own business and keeping their eyes on their own plate? And this whole idea of, oh, we need to control them and they won't be able to listen, so therefore they're not allowed to blah, 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 is ridiculous. You know, it's just, it's, 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 it's actually wrong and we've created this really sick, culture it where is. it's all about snitching it's all about control well these control freaks think they can tell people what to do how about we go back to choice that is what freedom is is the freedom to choose what you want to do with your life and it is not for the government to tell you how to live your life so can we get rid of that mentality i mean it's just shocking to me it, and then the hypocrisy of the outrage culture well it is it, it, and i mean i feel like everybody's outraged i feel like sometimes i'm outraged and i purposely <laughs> set, scale it back because i just don't want to get sucked into being outraged that's I, why we guard all, all, <laughs> right, all, all of my waking days they can't be just, a, there's enough for me to be outraged about, but I can't. I, I've got to focus, like, you know, we talk about reform. Okay, like, I've been trying to think, what is real reform that could actually be implemented? You know, you hear this whole defund the police. I don't even know what that remotely could be. I mean, I'm all to. for a hashtag defund all of it. Right, but <laughs> so I mean, what that's we could not going to happen. Well, but here's the thing. So let's talk about solutions for something like the police. Well, I, I was, mean, we have so, long lists. So I was trying to think, like, what, what could we reasonably, easily, readily, and with some sort of... I would like to see, one, the encryption on I the like police scanners removed yeah, because we see a lot of police action now where there's like a one line thing where it's like yeah. oh the SWAT was called out for something you can't find any information yeah. about it and there's policing in secret so the number one thing that chief capano can do yes. to improve relations in the city is to decrypt the scanners i agree i don't understand why body camera footage is not subject to the 91A. I, I was agree. deeply as shocked. As long as the party as long as the parties. Right. I mean I so so I mean not the not the government parties. The But public. but Tammy, shockingly, I mean I, I don't know. know if people understand this. The government and its agents now claim rights for themselves I know. that we as ordinary citizens do not have. You know, and I take I take offense and question very deeply, even the union leader, right? So now suddenly we are having this conversation about use of force and excessive use yeah. of force. We have a secret lawyers list that has that a bunch of cops on been. there. Uh, they won't release it because they're, they know they're gonna have to go back and release a bunch yeah. of people from jail, but apparently we're doing that with germs anyway, so I don't even know why we couldn't just do that. I mean, I don't want violent people out of jail, but if you, uh, if there was no victim in your crime, meaning you got popped for weed or, you know, whatever it was, let them out. Let's start decriminalizing yep. all of these control freak behaviors that we have now made, made, you know, life. Life yep. is now criminal. Living is pretty much criminal. <laughs> like if you go out in public, you're just like, well, you know, you're breaking some law. So I'm a fan of reform. So literally, thought of this yesterday, like, don't know how it would be implemented. It goes back to a lot of things. You, you can look at something and say, okay, but how would that work? You know, how, mm -hmm. did, how would it actually work? So I know that there are police, even in Manchester, even in New Hampshire, that in, act inappropriately. What if we said to all the police in New Hampshire, 
that you must self-report you all all of your um force that you use in your day in your job so if you know if this guy's if you're arresting a drunk and he gets out of control and you have to tackle him when you get back to the office you type in go up to the they would have to probably go through the ag's I mean, office it's supposed to be in the police report if they are actually reporting the right. truth in the police report so, so you know if we did this right i'm like okay so there would be this pool of information and maybe the peer maybe their peers should be able to report too but that should be balanced a little differently i mean did you see the video from nashua it was a video That's from hysterical. someone's apartment building I think it happened three weeks ago. Um, the, there are two officers. Fine. We don't know what be happened before right. or after. Everyone likes to say that. I'm like, I don't really care. Right. You Much grab like somebody the by the hair or who's whatever. tackling a child from behind. If you couldn't do that yeah. as a general citizen yeah. for any reason, including if you're the parent of a child and someone would call you for child abuse for diving, s tackling someone from behind and throwing them on the head or these Nashua cops right. who then tackled the guy, gave him a solid little head beat down and then pulled him to his feet by right. his hair. And it's like, that wait a minute. That is common assault, regardless of what happened before or after. If we weren't able to do it, then the officer or the government agent is also not allowed to do it. Unless you believe that we have actually created a class of people who are above the law. Well, we have. And so this morning, I don't even know, I think, I assume you would have seen it but maybe not so um greg moore who is has his own layer of frustration because he used to work for department of health and human services and he keeps saying you know the more bad information and bad decisions being made by these people he goes i spent years building trust with the community and now p nobody's listening to the department of health and human services because they don't they're no longer feel confident <laughs> i know so there was a uh, article in reason that came out this morning showing um several police officers slashing car tires during minneapolis protests oh, and the police admit to it they say um they sp state patrol troopers in minneapolis or in Minnesota, strategically deflated tires in order to stop behaviors such as vehicles driving dangerously and at high speeds in and around the protesters. And, and guys, we're not even making this up. I watched the footage. It's, it's crazy. literally like lines of, of uh, I believe these ones were actually in camo. Yes. So, you know, standing soldiers, comma, you know, uh, posse comitatus, like lots of violations of things of how it's not supposed to work. Walking in lines with knives slashing and slashing people, slashing in people's tires of and, people driving on the road. Oh, and even worse. But then there's also a parking lot at a Kmart where a lot of protesters had parked <laughs> wow. and reporters had parked. Every okay, they said they've tar they they really targeted cars that had concrete and rocks in them. So okay, what? Well, okay. <laughs> Every car in the Kmart parking lot had its tires slashed. Every single one. And, and, and like, the article- I mean, does this sound to anyone back home? Does this sound like we still have rule of law well, in this it, country? It, I mean, it, we, we have, I mean, there was a police department that actually took down the American flag and raised a thin blue, blue I cannot take flag. that. I don't like, you know what? I'm not a crazy flag person. I don't have like flags flying all over my, I put up red, white, and blue bunting for things. But, but you know, people, that's their prerogative. It drives me nuts when anybody takes the American flag and alters it to make their own secret, their own private group flag. Come on, come up with your own freaking design. Well, and, and if you wanna be <laughs> terrified, go Google this. There are actually photos out of, I believe it was New York State, right? And this was under Bloomberg, the billionaire who's mm -hmm. uh, you know trying to take everyone's guns away, the last defense that we actually have against a lawless, unjust, um, you know, system. That right. that he is, just said that. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> he just said 19 minutes. I'm like, we've been talking way longer than 10 minutes. <laughs> um, you know, is is um, with Bloomberg, who actually said when he was mayor of New York, he said, you know, I have this. Ma I think mayor of New. York. Oh yeah, uh, New, York. Of New York. My brain yeah. went state. Sorry. Um, so he 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 bragged about being uh, in charge of the. I believe it was the sixth or the eighth largest standing army in the world, yeah. meaning their police force was so large that it competed with countries. And that these officers now do not wear name, 
tags at all. You cannot identify them. And their uniforms are all uniforms with the thin blue flag on there. And I'm like, guys, if this is not like this is one, it's it's not not normal. You all stay at home and you, you know, they they play you because either it's Trump's fault or it's Obama's fault or whoever we have next, it won't be Biden. But, you know, they play those two things against each other while this police state just grows and marches on. And so we need to stop falling for the games and we need to all come together and say, how do we actually change right. these things? Because, you know, I, like, OK, the story that I'm referring to with the slashing of tires, this was in Minnesota. It wasn't in New Hampshire. But th- Things do happen in New in New Hampshire. They happen in Manchester. I've I'm a, I, you know while I might be a um, boisterous personality, I don't you know I'm generally not an aggressive person. And I've had face to face threatening remarks from pl- Manchester cops. Granted, this is he, the cop since retired, but he didn't retire because of that. But like, what else did he do to other people if he treated me as aggressively? And I mean, we we all know of instances where you know. If the if the goal is to actually have a, a good working relationship between the community and the police department so that they can do actual policing effectively, maybe we stop with the the the, the bear cats and the no knock raids and the covering up of stories. And when somebody does do something wrong, hold them accountable for doing something wrong. And then people will trust the police again. I mean, there's going to have to be significant reform in order to restore public trust. And I will say it a million times. I'm going to say it again today. Release the exculpatory evidence schedule, the secret lorries list, right? We have had some successes in terms of open and transparent Mm -hmm. government with the Fenneman case that we talked about last week. I think that's actually going to significantly help, which means they can't just hide everything as an internal personnel matter and then just put it in. And in fact, in today's union leader, I saw two articles where I was like, wow, this is actually the result of those decisions. The one was the Salem police officer. And then there was another one where there apparently was like a, uh, off-duty cop, which also they treat like police officers and duty. then yes. say you have extra rights. Right. So it's like a double whammy of bad that is just being covered up, uh, who, who was in a high-speed chase or something, and they didn't know it was a police officer. So they used all the super aggressive stuff, the roll strips, the pit moves, the, you know, like stuff that is actually genuinely pretty dangerous. Um, to do it. And then when the cop jumped out of the car, he was kind of like, oh, you guys got me like, ha ha, you know? And I guess all of that was just in personnel files and hidden. And now they're claiming, oh, it's not, um, it's it's taken too long. So it's- uh, It's out, it's, 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 it's past it's, the it's time past, frame. Yeah. So, um. so you know what? Um, we are lucky that we live in a time where there is more transparency. Mm-hmm. I encourage everyone every time, don't don't interfere. But if you see a police encounter, even if you're walking on the sidewalk and he's just talking to a homeless guy, stop and film it. Be polite, don't be rude. Just be like, hey, I'm here as a witness. I just wanna make sure everything's cool for everyone. Because right. maybe it also that Maybe helps. that homeless guy just kicked that cop when he walked by. Right. But, you know. and, and, and we know based on statistics that when we do record these things, then we can help effect change. Because I will tell you this, Tammy, there is no way we would have seen this reaction if we didn't have a video. If there wasn't a video okay. of what happened, I'm there. pretty sure if there had been a video of the the guy who got beat up in Strange Brew some years ago by the off duty cops, that would have went right. differently too. Right, which you know they were all left scot free. The guy had, I think, he had like 87 he, broken bones oh, in terrible. his face. I mean, it was a really, really bad situation. And a judge in New Hampshire said, it "Well, justified. it wasn't their finest hour." Um, speaking of... So those wanna, judges should also all retire. I want to throw you. this in when we're talking about rebuilding trust and, you know, can't can't end the show without mentioning. So we're running for office. People, if I filed for state rep in Ward 10. You're going to file for state senate over in Goffstown in the... Manchester. Know, parts of yeah. Manchester. Um, so every day I look at the lists of who's signed up and everything and by golly, no outrage at all on the part of the Democrats that they recruited Tommy Katsiantonis, who was recently in jail for tax evasion. Um, he's going to run for state legislature. Wow. So Because, and- you know, 
a known criminal. No outrage. Really? Can we just? I mean, I mean I, you know what? He, I'm going to give him the benefit of the doubt. He made a mistake. I don't think it was accidental. But let's just say he did. He served his time. He's sure. done his punishment. That's all fine and dandy. Is that the best the Democrats can come up with for candidates for the state legislature? He doesn't go. So I guess there's that. Um, if he should happen to get elected in Morty, the, the good thing is he doesn't, well, he does go. He goes when the Democrats need him up for really crucial votes. The rest of the time, he just doesn't go. He never has. His brother George, when he represented Ward 10, never went. Like, literally, never went. So, so maybe it's time also to sort of clean house, I think, as people start to think about this election cycle and stuff. Um, you know, look, look for fresh new candidates. Yeah. I mean, certainly for me in my Senate race, Lou D'Alessandro has been there for a long ever. time. Uh, you know, he was born before the Second World War. He served 11 terms. I think he served his time out. Maybe it's time for someone who has mm -hmm. fresh ideas, who actually can identify the problems and who understands what the solutions are. So, you know, I hope people give us a fair shake. I think people should be looking for new, fresh candidates. Uh, don't realize you know, someone who who, who was a criminal, <laughs> and, don't, and then came don't back. just keep and don't just keep voting for people who are voting against your best interest. Right. I mean, some you know, unless maybe it, maybe this is important to you. If you really think the government needs to re restrict straws or plastic grocery bags, or tell bags, you how to wash your hands, maybe you can find candidates because there's plenty of them who voted for things like that. I, I just think we need to leave life to people a little bit more often than we do. I mean, we need to restore the balance of our nation and certainly our state by saying that government is only there to protect your rights. They're not there to tell you how to wash your no, hands no. or which pool to use. No. And that we need to make government smaller so that we can all get on with our lives and live happy, balanced good lives instead of, you know, all fighting each other because everyone's addicted to social media now. So um, I feel like we can move beyond these problems. I think we can too. So the only happy thing I can we can end with is um, I went to the Manchester Animal Shelter plant sale with masks and all sorts of stuff this past weekend. Um, they are extending it to this coming Saturday as well. I can't even think what day that'll be. I guess it's like the 13th maybe. Um, no masks required now. Um, but that's at the Manchester Animal Shelter. I think it starts at nine o'clock on Saturday morning. Great way to get um, plants for your yard. Uh, that's all I got. Uh, enjoy the weather. It's nice 80s. I mean, it's a little cloudy, but it's beautiful. I mean, we're not even halfway through June yet, so this is awesome. Yep. Anyways, we'll Summer's see you next coming. See you next week. Bye, guys. Bye.